the environment is so good, you know, just like uh, so many environments show up, but how do we make sure that they get those shows? So I think the key dyna dynamic right now is really about the apprenticeship program, you know, making sure we create a green, directly create the apprenticeship program, packing those policies, packing that policy, to make sure our community, our community have first place on those shelves, honestly. Because when you even think about union, unions have this discriminatory practices, we already know that, a uh, certain way that they lock black and brown people out based on high school diploma, based on human rights, uh, driver license. What, what, the, basically what I'm trying to say, the goal is creating a pathway, creating a, path, a pathway within young kids, like the apprenticeship program that we have right now, that they can have access to those green jobs. Because we can't, like you said, we can't, Simon said earlier, we can't sell it to the party late. And with communities that have been like, uh, communities that, like this thing that have been environmentally, we call them EJ community, environmental justice communities, black and brown kids, these should be the, they should be the future of those jobs. And we already did that with Solar Pioneers, we already created the model. It's not already new, it's not new. I mean, it's not, we don't need to duplicate it, we already did the model. So how do we scale that up? And how do we create more black kids to be solar pioneers? How do we make sure those kids are becoming managers and supervisors and they go out there and they make a 150 k That's a lot of money. We're not, we're not thinking about that. I'm thinking about that, Cyrus is thinking about that, but like, we need to create, it's cute to save five people, but can we save a million? And then from a million, can we send bill, a billion? So that's, I'm looking at that. And we, like you said before about poverty, you know, if we all win, we're all good. We all got economics. So economics is the key. So that's all I wanted to say yes, about that. And, and not, that's not the last thing I want to say. Then you got cannabis. Cannabis is another industry. We just legalize weed. A lot of people don't like weed. I don't like people, whatever. You might not like weed. What's money in it? What's up? So it's money in it. Let's get that money. That's the one way I'm saying it. Like, keep it real. Keep making $80,000. That's security uh, for uh, protecting cannabis. So if we got locked up for it, we should be able to sit there, use it as our tools to sit there, benefit our community. So. Uh, and I'm also part of the Cannabis Task Force at Mega Evans College. I created that cannabis, cannabis, cannabis Task Force at Mega Evans College with my friend Joel. So we created a curriculum where we teach young kids about uh, cannabis, like the whole story. So how do we open businesses? How do we open uh, dispensaries behind these things, stuff like that? We need, it's a way of environmental jobs, and we need just, people I'm trying to say, we need to be first dibs at these jobs. We have to make sure our community get it first, and that's all I'm saying. So, Jameson, you said a lot, and Catherine, you said, <laughs> thank you for the correction. Uh, it's not Gabe, it's Jameson. <laughs> so I appreciate that. So a couple of things. Um, and let me start with the cannabis industry, if it's OK with anybody. Um, I need people to think about it not just from um, a dispensary point of view. There are about maybe 11 different licenses mm -hmm. that are coming down the pipeline. And we need to make sure that our community has access to getting training and creating an opportunity for them to develop different businesses. I have a friend right now that actually has, um, he cultivates in Oklahoma. He's from Brownsville, right? And, um, he actually called and said, hey, you know, Nikki, I, I got to talk to you about this or whatever. So he's talking to me about all this stuff. And he really opened me up to understand, wow. He's like, look, I'm trying to talk to these guys, but I don't think they really understand what's going on. So, you know, we're talking to some people um, that are involved in, in the legislative piece and discovered that, hey, he says, Nikki, he said, I have... He cultivates, but he, in his cultivation, in his small thing, he got to have like 50 sockets. That's an electrician. And it's not just standard electrician. They got to understand marijuana. So people have to be retrained, but that's also an opportunity to bring additional people in. The HVAC system. That's not a regular HVAC person that you can just come in there and set that up. They have to be trained for that. There are opportunities for people to create businesses. It's not just about the dispensary, it's not about the cultivators, because the reality of it all is that they're only allowing you access to one use, uh, one license, if you're doing recreational uh, marijuana, right? But the other part of it is tell our people to start looking at the medical marijuana stuff too. Because you can access a number of different licenses that's coming with that. 
And what's going to happen, if we don't start looking at it from a broader scale, as opposed to let me just grab this store, you know what's going to happen to those stores when those big box companies come in? Mm-hmm. And they can't compete? They're going to have to close down. So we got to start looking at it from a very a broader scale. And the same way that we look at that is how we're going to have to look at these green jobs. But how many people have access to even knowing that? Who's going up to all the way to lobby that we put funding to make sure that we have access to these jobs, that we have available training for these jobs? Right? So we have to not just, you know, talk about, hey, it's available. We got to make sure that we are responsible, that I'm responsible, to make sure that the outreach is there and we're providing access. We just talked about the school, right? That should be a school that's in our community. See, right. actually put me on to something I had no idea. Yeah, in regards to the co- cooperative school. Co-op tech. Co-op tech. Why do we have that in each name? In the old days, all ancestors sold their home. And, and that's what we gotta understand. You see that need? If you, if, so you take the class. Then you get, you, get, you come back to the community and say, so I wanna set this up. And everybody, the same way we're here tonight, putting a $10 or $20, build your own. Train your own people. Then we have something to step up to it. We're gonna sit around waiting for other people to give us. That's that same mentality that they wanna stop with. We need to create our own, like our ancestors did in Tuskegee, all the rest of them. They got up, they wanted us to go to school, they keep knocking on their doors and begging them. They opened up a school book and they taught them. And you, you have to, you said that, see, things have a trickle up effect. So if I help a, a, a stay at home mom get her college degree, that's a trickle up effect. It goes out to her children. We gotta take one step at a time. We gotta build our own. We gotta stop sitting around looking for somebody to give us something and say, we stuck mm-hmm. because they didn't give it to me. The books are there, everything is online. You got a computer, you want it all day long? Sit there and learn the skill. Once you have it, there's a procedure to follow. If you get yours, you can bring other people with you. It's just that simple. So there's now one model that we need to follow. Right, we, combination of things. We have and to, the government's going to give me mine because I pay into it. Right, we have so to, we have to I want to what we deserve. We're not asking for any extra, we're asking for what we are trying to do. I don't want my 40 acres of a mule. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, right. but, but in the meantime, but we have to explore. I'm trying to get somebody else. Yo, here, take this book. Follow this path like this. I keep my customers. Take your tax return, put it in the bank, don't spend it. But in two to three years, you know, enough money to walk to the bank and say, I want to buy a house. We have it, but we're not, we not, we not making the most of our resources. You know, when we make the most of our that's like they had the black wall the whole thing. We need to read and invent ourselves right with what we have. We have it, but we're so smart about this, so our money goes to their community and build up. We don't keep our money in our community. But who's teaching the kids at an early age to do this? That's not even a part of the curriculum, which needs to change. It's not a part of the curriculum, it's got to be a part of your house. It's got to be a part of your thinking. But you may not have that in your house. I understand right? that. So we gotta that's, make sure that we, we are reaching people. That's why when they sit there when they come to me, I sit there and I share. Yeah, you can this can happen for you. You know, everybody has an issue. This can happen for you. But this is how you're gonna set up and this is how you plan it. You have to plan it, you have to want. You have to create the idea of want. And that's what economic empowerment is all about for us. You gotta create a, a rethinking on it, a, res, a reset of your thinking. And don't expect nobody else to give it to you. You gotta build your own. Well, some people have to be taught that too. And unfortunately, yeah, be there are some households out there yeah, okay. that don't have that I'm type good. of um, apparatus in place. The parents need to be taught. And unfortunately, we are, you know, in that situation in places I'm like East New York and Brown. I don't have people. So that is one answer, but there are a number of different models that's, that's going to have to work together yeah, to build this community. People have to follow me. I have to write up ABCs down on a piece of paper for her to follow it. But I still hide it. So give her encouragement. Now she has her medical license or whatever. And I mean, she was able to build it. You take people where they're at and you can and you, you can help them. I don't know how to say it. But when we can look at it and say we don't have the skills, you got an opportunity to do it. No. Create the create the fill the void. And we can do that with a dollar each. Yeah, but also, I'm um, supposed to add to it because, um, like, reality is we can do that.
together, but what we'll brings us to the table is like so the initiative that gave you know, us because it's, it's, it's so that's why I did the whole Nico uh Nikki thing, right? Mm -hmm. So in different spaces we show up different, right? But when we did the uh solar primary initiative, well here's the thing, because I'm a great clown, right? <laughs> right? So what happened? We had a great experience, we had a great experience. But then when we got to the end of it, what happened with Vivid and Love of Soul? When we started asking for real jobs, right? Yeah. So what happened in that space there is they connected with us and they partnered with us because the young people that we trained up were culturally competent enough to knock on every Nehemiah home in East New York and Brownsville to get them to listen you know, to the, the advantages and incentives of solar energy. So they were able to sign them up. So once we broke that barrier and brought them into community, when we started asking for the professional jobs, then they pulled back crickets. So we actually stopped competing, you know, like for certain initiatives because we didn't want to stop, you know, like at the door to door to be the It was good for the time, but we didn't want to normalize that. Yeah. Reason why I want to add to this conversation is because when I was speaking with Nico about with uh, with Nico about this. The apprenticeship plan that we set forth requires that if you're taking federal, city, or state dollars for solar installation, mm -hmm. you are mandated to be an employee partner with our apprenticeship program. Okay. Right? So sometimes you need government you know, to mandate so that we can, because we tried it on our own, mm -hmm. and we can't get them to give what we want. That's how I got my first business. With a government mandate. So it's not wrong all the time. We took it as far as we could on our own, and they didn't really prove to be. I was, it was cool, but I wasn't happy with that, right? Because we did, you know, we honored that agreement. We honored that commitment. I was with these ladies here. Organization uh, gave me UPS, and when I started asking UPS for a hiring commitment, they was like, "No, we just want to sponsor." I'm like, "I don't want t-shirts and cookies." Yeah. <laughs> I asked for a real partnership, right? So sometimes you need, so the value of, you know, like what we're offering right now is we can do the bootstraps, we can do things on our own, we can finance. I'm, I'm kind of okay, right? But in order for us to scale up and get to where we need, sometimes you need that safety net, and that safety net is demanded. So what we presented, you know, like to, to the state is, these apprenticeship programs, but well, let me take it a step further. The apprenticeship program or the model that we're presenting is not just for one industry. Mm -hmm. It's not just for one, it's for any industry. So when we get the solar pioneer, the recognized apprenticeship opportunity, you know, like with the Department of Labor, now we have this apprenticeship program, and when these solar companies come into community, talking about solar solarizing, there's a mandate for you to work with our apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. Not just to train, but there's a mandate to hire. So that's how we get there, because we tried it on our own. We did it on our own, right? But then what we didn't do is negotiate that six-figure salary. But then we got some, you know, like coaching to do, you know, like with the young people, not just young people, people who work. So, you know, like, we got four making 20, 25, 30,000 a, uh, a year. We're like, whoa, that's not, they're like, no, I'm good. How many times that happened, Alicia? It's, they're looking at us like we're crazy. And I'm like, 30,000 or 32,000, and that's a full stop. They planned their whole life around the 32,000. Moved out? They done moved out, got a whole family now, and added kids into the situation, and don't plan on just increasing their value at all. And it's kind of a disservice. You have work to do on the young person side and on the policy side as well. It has to be done on both sides. You have to start um, educating our families and our parents about the importance of these kind of programs um, and about supporting on the